weekend, especially for our men's teams. Nebraska men, they win yesterday on the road, and they get the number three seed in the Big Ten tournament. You go back to Saturday, Creighton defeats Villanova, holds off Villanova. Trey does a Trey thing and gets the fadeaway to secure the victory for the Jays. They win, and they get themselves the number two seed in the Big East tournament. Last night, it was Frankie Fiddler beating the clock to send the Omaha men's basketball team into the Summit League semifinal tonight against Denver at 830. But over the weekend, history was made at Baxter Arena for the Omaha hockey team as they took not one but two, a two-game sweep over North Dakota for the first time in program history. It was the number three ranked and four ranked, depending on which poll you're looking at, North Dakota Fighting Hawks, a team that was in the top four in the pairwise, which is essentially college hockey's RPI. Omaha, which came in and ranked number 16 and was right about at that number with the pairwise. Obviously, with senior night on Saturday, with what was, and I'm not exaggerating, I'm not having recency bias, was collectively, between Friday and Saturday, the best environments that I have seen at Baxter Arena in that building for that hockey team. Just it was, was there. it was unreal. You were there Friday, absolutely. And then Saturday was awesome. A great salute to the seniors and the grad students that were playing their last home game. Now, the only downside was you needed to do what you did this weekend, and then you needed Denver to sweep Colorado College for Omaha to have home ice for the NCHC first round playoffs. Colorado College won on Friday, so you knew going into Saturday that Omaha had no chance of hosting the first round of the NCHC playoffs. Didn't matter. They still win that one. What is also extremely impressive for this hockey squad between Mike Gabinet, his coaching staff, Dave Noel Bernier, Bennett Hambrook, Peter Aubrey, and then that entire team, you had the flu running through that group all week. Simon Litkozy, who got the started goal Friday night, who was outstanding. All of a sudden, you find out Saturday he can't play because he's ill. You had a couple other major contributors throughout the week. You had Ivy's flowing through these guys throughout the week. Not sure if they're going to be able to play. And that was some of the most high-energy hockey for six periods in a 24-hour span that I have seen this program put out considering that they were not healthy and playing one of the most talented teams in all of college hockey. Well, freaking done Omaha hockey. That was so impressive. And Jimmy remember, and Gary and I were having this conversation after that Denver series of is this program stuck? Are they, you know, where are they going? You are a, a proclaimed hockey school. That's where the money is in. So you've got to start expecting a better result. Since that really bad series against Denver that they had at home, this team has looked different. This team has played high-level hockey. They have been solid. Uh, you've had now sweeps against, well, the traditional sweep against uh, North Dakota this last weekend. They swept Miami on the road, but also Colorado College, who they play in the NCHC playoffs in Colorado Springs this weekend. They had sort of the non-traditional sweep, meaning they won on Friday, and then they beat them in a shootout. Uh, That would be fine if they could do that this weekend as well. But they have played some big boy hockey. Credit to Mike Gabinet. Credit to this coaching staff, these players. We've seen the the second-half swoon for this this, uh, hockey program that dates back to, you know, even the end of the Mike Kemp era, going into the Dean Blaze era and Mike Gabinet, where you've had – a, a weekend or two where you had a chance to maybe take a big step forward in the pairwise or seize momentum. And then all of a sudden you trip up somewhere. Maybe, maybe it's on the road against Miami. Maybe it's on the road when CC was struggling or maybe a home series against a team, whatever the case is, it was always kind of in the DNA of this program. Uh, this team didn't do that. This team finished so strong and we'll see because they made history this weekend. They can make history again for the program. If they can get out of the first round of the NCHC playoffs this week, and they have yet to play in the frozen face-off, which is the final four of the conference tournament. And this is the last year they're going to be doing this up in Minneapolis before it just goes to strictly campus sites. So wouldn't that be cool to finally get it done here as they move away from 
having the frozen face off in Minneapolis. They might actually be doing it one more year. I think they're doing it two more years before they fade uh, phase that out and they do just strictly campus sites. But either way, great opportunity for them to to recapture history like they did this last weekend. Now, the other part that was great about this weekend is we start looking at their opportunity to be an at-large in the NCAA tournament. You only get 16 teams in the college hockey NCAA tournament. Ah, like the good old days in basketball. Yeah, that's right. The pairwise number is one you hear about a lot. So Omaha's sweep of North Dakota, which was huge, but also coupled with UMass losing to Maine, pushed Omaha up to a tie for number 11 in the pairwise. And again, if you're sitting at 11, maybe 12th at the at the very least, there's a good shot you're in. You you don't want to get beyond 12. And 12, some, and 12 sometimes can be maybe not high enough, but they are tied at number 11 in the pairwise, and guess who they're tied with? The team they play this weekend, Colorado College, up in Colorado Springs. So it was a huge weekend. They are in a good position in the pairwise right now. People have been asking me, okay, what do you think they need to do win. to not – have to win the entire conference tournament, but make it in. Just win. You got. You can't get. You can't get swept this weekend. You at least have to have one win against Colorado College, and I still think you might need the series victory because you can't rely on all these things around you to happen. I like mine. Just win. I, I agree. If, if they win, others, just and win. if they win the series, they are playing as hot as anybody right now in that conference. If they win the series again, you you check off another box in the history column of things that this program has not accomplished they just did one this last weekend by sweeping north dakota on the home ice and you would have a chance to get out of that first round and play in the frozen face off that would be amazing and it almost feels very fitting for this team that over the last month has been as hot as anybody in college hockey it's uh just like adrian told rocky win oh uh, i also like to give a shout out to those people that bang on the uh, like the, the red Kids army love them the Red Army. They remind me of the people in uh, Oakland that bang on those drums in the yep. outfield. I was like, "Don't stop! No, keep banging. The it louder, was, the better." They and 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 so many others that you know go to every game that are a big part of that environment, big part of that atmosphere. I want to go to are, more games. They're always appreciated. But you you mentioned those guys too getting you know you get sometimes you get some newcomers there, or you get you know some of the casual fans that make a, a few games every year. Everybody who like was a part of it, including you, Jimmy. Everybody who was a part of it this weekend. Well done, because that. That energy, it was palpable. You could feel that. It was it was cool. It was fun pizza. to be a part of it. It was terrific. Yeah, that was neat. All right, when we come back, Tim Kruger will join us in studios. We will get a look at his final bracket before we get the official, the official bracket in one week. And a lot of questions with Creighton.